to see how evolutionary solver works, let's consider a simple function that is difficult for GRG nonlinear solver. Consider a function of a single variable x. fx is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 4 and times x minus 5 for x between 1 and 5. The objective is to maximize f of x over this range. The graph of this function shown in this figure indicates that there are two local maximum. One is around x equals 3.5 and the other at x is equal to 1.5. The global maximum, the one we want, is near x at 1.5. Next, we are going to use our Excel spreadsheet to demonstrate the steps we can implement evolutionary solver. And let's take a look at this uh, simple example really quick. And this is where our x is. And here we have x minus 1 all the way to x minus 5. And in B11, that is our objective function, the product of all those five terms. At this moment, x is empty by default is 0. As a result, the product is negative 120. Now let's see how we can implement evolutionary solver. Let's open solver first. As usual, we specify our objective which is in cell B11. And we would like to maximize it by changing our x which is in cell B6. Then let's add constraints. In this example, we have only two constraints, which are the lower and upper bound of x. Let's take care of it. x must be less than or equal to 5. And then x must be greater than or equal to 1. OK, that's it. In this case, whether to check this box make unconstrained variables not negative doesn't really matter because we know that already x is between 1 and 5. Next, let's select evolutionary solver and then click options. Under all methods tab, we see solving limits over here and we can enter some solving limits as the ones shown over here. The main reason for doing so is to keep evolutionary solver from repeatedly giving you error message as it reaches these limits. But it should be okay we take those as default values. Next, let's select the uh, evolutionary tab. These are the settings that control evolutionary solver. Convergence measures the rate of change of the objective. Smaller values here normally means that solver will take more time or will stop at a point closer to the optimum solution. You can leave this at its default value. Mutation rate is the frequency at which mutations are introduced into the population of solutions. It is a number between 0 and 1. A higher mutation rate increases the diversity of the population and the chance that a new, better solution will be found, but this may increase total solution time. You can leave this setting at its default value, which is 0.075, but we have sometimes had success by increasing it to 0.25. Population size is the number of candidate solutions or chromosomes at any point in time. The minimum population size is 10, if you supply a value less than 10 in this box or leave it blank, the evolutionary solver uses the population size of 10 times the number of decision variables in the problem, but no more than 200. The default value of 100 should work just fine, although we sometimes increase it to 150. Note that the initial population is chosen randomly but includes at least one instance of the starting solution you specify in the decision variable cells. In the random seed box, type a positive integer number to be used as the 
fix the seed for the random number generator used for a variety of random choices in the evolutionary method. If you enter a number here, the evolutionary method will use the same choices each time you click solve. If you leave this box blank, the random number generator will use a different seed each time you click solve, which may yield a different final solution. Maximum time without improvement measured in seconds indicates the stopping rule for the algorithm. If it doesn't find a meaningful improvement in this amount of time, it will stop and report the best solution so far. 30 seconds are a reasonable choice. If you wish, you can choose 100 or longer, but it will let your algorithm run much longer. Select the require bounds on variables checkbox to specify that the evolutionary method should run only if you have defined lower and upper bounds on all decision variables in the constraints box. The evolutionary method is far more effective if you define bounds on all variables. The tighter the bounds on the variables that you can specify, the better the evolutionary method is likely to perform. We suggest you check the required bounds on variable box, which forces you to include constraints with lower and upper bounds on the decision variables. Is it possible to leave this box unchecked and ignore bounds on decision variables? Of course, but it is not a good idea. The genetic algorithm will not work as well, so you should always check this box and always include bounds on the decision variables in your list of constraints. Now let's click OK and then solve. For this particular model, evolutionary solver gets to the solution very quick. Then it runs for 30 seconds the time specified in the dialog box without being able to find a better solution at which point in time it quits. Note that this solution is indeed the global optimal solution as we can see from this figure over here.